homelessness is not normal. So homelessness has not always been a part of the American narrative in our society. And so I would love to see in my lifetime uh, a time when, when we didn't have massive street homelessness that we have today. For the most part, Portland is a compassionate town and really cares about the idea of being able to support people on the streets. I think they're craving a space of, of dignity and respect. We're talking about folks who had full lives before um, homelessness became a part of their reality and that they deserve the same kind of dignity and respect we would like from other people. I think that there's a myth out there that it's easy to be homeless in Portland and, and the harsh reality is it, it, homelessness is hell. So being able uh, to all come together as a community to be able to solve the problem is something we have to be able to do. We talk about the homeless people rather than talking with them. People are proposing solutions for them rather than incorporating them and finding out what they need and what they think might be a solution. And I also think recognizing the diversity and saying, oh, you're homeless, so you must have need X. And so how do we come up with, you know, multiple, multiple tracks for people who want to get out of homelessness? I was in the Navy. I, I, I've lived in a lot of places in my life. I've seen a lot of cities. Empathy for homeless people is far greater in Portland than in any other city I've ever lived in. I do find it inspirational for some of the, uh, the empathy that goes on with the business owners and people that are homeless and, and in difficult situations. And they give out, you know, uh, sack lunches for people like, you know, later on in the day, which is pretty cool. You know, not a lot of places just give you food to take with you. You can't go hungry in Portland. You can't. Well, that's the thing. It's kind of what y'all should know, is food is never a problem in Portland. I mean, you could survive being homeless and not have, and never even walk into a food pantry. You, you could easily do that. You could also just go to food pantries. There's, there's dozens of food pantries. There's a plethora of food. We haven't even started talking about food stamps. You could just live off food stamps. I think it was just right over underneath the at the, the Burnside Bridge over here. There was a lady that had um, had gotten all of her things uh, moved to the sidewalk, and she got frustrated and pretty much abandoned them, threw her hair to the ground. And the Citrus City Concerns actually pulled up and marked off her stuff and gave her time to and helped her actually pick up her stuff and move it to the shelter. So I was I was impressed by that. Like to me and my wife, it feels like we have to be like druggies or like a meth or something just for help. They just treat me like, oh, he's homeless, whatever. There's absolutely no bathrooms anywhere. We pretty much shit and piss everywhere because we have nowhere to go to the bathroom. The, what they're doing well for people is they're giving shots. They should make more public bathrooms though. The only thing is they don't really have anything uh, very much for couples. And I'm married, I've been married for eight years. My wife does not want to be separated from me to sleep in a shelter in one place and I sleep in another one, you know, we want to stay together. Since there really isn't anything like that, uh, we just choose to sleep outside. When shelters are set up as single sex, it means that folks who are couples, if they don't have uh, children under 18, there are not shelter options for them to go in together, um, which is not a choice I would make personally, and I don't think we should expect folks to make just because they're, they're poor and, and happen to be sleeping outside right now. In my opinion, homeless people, let's just say three. I mean, obviously I'm grossly oversimplifying it, but within these three categories, it pretty much covers the gambit. The first is an unbelievable sense of laziness, a laziness that I have never, ever encountered in my life. And the second category is just down in the luck. Um, just a set of circumstances, the economy swings, and it doesn't take much for you to get massively in debt, for you to lose your house or your, or your rent and you're evicted. And being poor is a vicious cycle, and it's a very quick one. Um, you could find yourself in lower middle class to having nothing in a matter of months. And I, I feel really bad about that when that happens. And the third is an unusual level of um, mental mental illness. You're not going to help them. They need help, but you will never get them as a productive member of society as much as you want to. It, it's just simply not going to happen. I think there are so many people, um, different categories of 
organizations and entities that are invested in finding a solution to homelessness and they have their own cultures so there's governmental culture nonprofit culture faith-based culture how do we all all cross those lines and those barriers and kind of form a coalition to address the issue and draw on all the different strengths of all the different entities and the abilities instead of trying to be everything to everyone I mean that's a tall order